Last week, New Hampshire Democrats scored a number of victories on election night, and they were certainly celebrating in Manchester, where Joyce Craig defeated four-term incumbent Ted Gatzes, becoming the first woman elected mayor in the history of the Queen City. She joins us this morning. Mayor-elect Craig, congratulations and thanks Thank for you, being Adam. here. We appreciate it. So take us back to election night. Uh, after such a uh, jarring experience in 2015, <laughs> when was the moment uh, last Tuesday when you were finally able to allow yourself to say, I've won. Well, we were sitting around our kitchen table uh, collecting the numbers and, uh, you know, there was a certain point in time where we knew uh, that we had it and it was it was great. We worked very hard on this campaign, uh, knocked a lot of doors, made a lot of phone calls, had hundreds of volunteers. So, uh, you know, worked hard and very glad that our uh, hard work paid off and, um, you know, it's a humbling experience and uh, very thankful for the support that I received. What was the difference between 2015 and 2017? Uh, the difference is that, you know, uh, we came so close in 2015. Um, issues are re relatively the same, and I, uh, you know, we had a much more robust campaign, and again, um, had a lot of conversations with the voters of Manchester, with the residents. Um, spent a lot of time listening to their ideas and their concerns, and I think that really mattered um, in this election, and we were able to turn out um, more voters. Take us through the nuts and bolts of setting up a new administration. You have uh, several weeks here to do this, but wh what do you have to do before January 2nd? Yeah, uh, obviously. Obviously, lots of meetings, lots of uh, phone calls with people, but meeting with the department heads, meeting with every member on the board of mayor and aldermen and school board, and meeting with residents. Um, again, it's very important and, you know, something that I really want to do is encourage communication between the school board and the board of mayor and aldermen, um, receive feedback from our community so that we're building policy and working toward, you know, building a stronger Manchester, what the residents and the business people in Manchester want to see. Education and city school that was a marquee issue for you during the campaign. What changes will we see uh, as you take office in January? Yeah, I guess, you know, again, it boils down to communication and um, hoping that we can bring more decorum to board meetings. So bringing the board together so that we can work together on common goals uh, to really affect um, direct student uh, learning in our school district. So working with the superintendent and working directly with that board um, so that we have um, a, a, a cohesive group um, moving the city forward. Do you need to bring in a new superintendent as a new leadership here or anything like that? You know, I uh, am scheduled to meet with Dr. Vargas. I think he's been doing a great job and, you know, my intention is to, c to continue working with him and uh, bringing the board together so that we can support um, what's best for students in Manchester. Over the last decade, we've seen uh, so many students and communities leave the Manchester school system. Is there any way uh, to bring them back or is that ship sailed? No, I think that there's a great opportunity for new leadership in Manchester to reach back out to a community like Hooksit um, so that they know that the mayor in Manchester is a huge advocate for public um, education and that we want to work with them. Um, we value their participation in our schools and that you know we want to build that relationship back. We do have some students from Hooksit still here uh, but obviously if we can grow that um, it's great for Manchester. Uh, we have the great kids in our school district but we'd also receive the revenue um, that those students bring and we, we need that today. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously another big topic is the opioid crisis. What changes will we see in the city's approach to tackling that uh, terrible problem? Well, from my ride-alongs, I was able to see an awful lot about what's happening on the street with uh, people that are addicted, also with what our first responders are dealing with. And one of the things that really um, stuck out to me was that, you know, when someone is brought into the hospital when they've overdosed, um, they're they're kept there for a time to, uh, to, to be watched over, but then they're able to just walk out of the hospital and go back into the environment that they um, left. And to me, there's a great opportunity for us, for the city, to educate them on options that are available for them for treatment and recovery. And I'd love to be able to build something there. Um, just to, to, to we, we have good things happening in the city, but there are opportunities where we can build upon them and do better. Yeah, you mentioned the good things. Obviously, Safe Station uh, has been a, a big success, but I think a lot of people want to see what's next right. there. And so how do you, um, I know you've already been meeting with the key stakeholders already from those programs, whether it's uh, Serenity Place or the, uh, the Fire Chief, obviously, but what is the next step in building out sort of those step-down or support services that surround uh, those programs already? Well, bringing them together again, you know, so we have Farnham Center, we have Serenity Place, we have Hope for New Hampshire Recovery. We need to make sure that we're all 
all working together so that we can do the best for the people that need the services the most. And that's one of my goals, to bring us together um, so that we can provide the treatment that's so necessary. And also to work with Concord so that they understand what we're dealing with in Manchester when you know we are treating every person who comes here, no matter if they're from Manchester or not. And my hope is that you know Concord will appreciate that and, and provide us with some more funding because it's so desperately needed. Yeah, you mentioned that sort of state federal nexus that yes. exists right now. One of the big topics is transitional housing, and a lot of that is probably, uh, for better or worse, going to be in Manchester or is here already. Is the city doing enough to ensure that that housing is doing its job, essentially that, that you don't have landlords who are just warehousing people and taking that money? Can the city do better there? I think the city and the state can. So we're looking to the state to provide guidelines. And also we'd need to change ordinances in Manchester that allow for sober housing and uh, housing for um, people that are um, recover in recovery. So I think it's a combination of state and city. We need to, again, work together to make sure we're providing the services. You mentioned working together. Uh, so often it feels feels like politics in Manchester could just be combat. Hmm. How do you, can you change that dynamic or is this something that's been since time immemorial? No, I think we can absolutely change it. You know, you need to go into situations with an open mind and put politics behind you. You know, it's, we have these issues, we need to talk about the issues, but there are opportunities and if everyone comes to the table with an open mind and again, takes the politics out of it, we have a great opportunity to move things forward. And that's what I look forward to doing. Mm -hmm. And yet, uh, you know, there are people who are still serving there who, you know, uh, kind of relish uh, the the exchange of ideas in an intense way. How are you going to deal with that when that confronts you? Yeah, I mean, same way I have in the past. You know, it's not anything new. Um, but again, it's building those relationships. And I have those with those people. Um, but building the relationships and the trust in that we both and all want to work in the same direction on building a stronger Manchester. I do believe everyone on these boards wants the same thing. And so, you know, it's it's getting that energy, the positive energy together, and just going forward and trying to tackle the issues that we have and put forward plans to address them. You said uh, that you want to ensure that the boards and the appointments that you make in Manchester better reflect what the city looks like today in 2017. What does that mean in practice? Yeah, obviously, it, you know, we want to always hire the most qualified person, but we have a wonderfully diverse community here in Manchester. And I'd love to be able to show that diversity in boards um, that, that we have in the city. And it takes outreach into the different communities so that people understand where the openings are. And that's something that I look forward to doing. Mm -hmm. The Mill Yard, uh, we're here at WMUR-TV in, in the Mill Yard. There's a lot of discussion right now about how to better connect uh, sort of the way that this is set up here. And it's so sort of follows the river mm -hmm. and it kind of blocks downtown in the river. What are we going to see over the next few years in terms of trying to sort of break down those barriers and make more horizontal? Connectivity. Yeah, I mean, there's a wonderful group right now working called Manchester Connects, which I was involved with a couple of years ago. They're doing great work in terms of connecting downtown to the mill yard, and we need to sort of move that forward to connect the west side as well. We shouldn't allow this river to divide the city like it has in the past, and we also need to embrace the river for what it is and really build upon that. So it's, again, you know, working with the community, um, the groups that are involved, and providing them with assistance from the mayor's office and support so that we can really build up this group here. All right. And uh, what does it mean uh, to be the first woman elected mayor of Manchester? This is, we mentioned, 170 years of mayors and you're number one now uh, as a woman. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Um, you know, I'm the mother of two daughters. Um, it's great for them to see and great for, you know, young girls and women to see that they have every opportunity available to them. And this is something that they now have the opportunity to, to be. Um, you know, so it's it's great. And I also, you know, Part of it also is, you know, you mentioned that we came up short two years ago, um, but I didn't give up. And so I want people to see that, you know, perseverance pays off, hard work pays off. It's If it's something that you believe in, you need to just keep going, even though it's tough. And, and you know, to me, that's most important. All right. Mayor-elect Joyce Craig, I'm sure we'll be seeing you back here again relatively soon. Thank you. Good luck.